Hi, I'm Charles Zafudo. I'm an instructional design freelancer and e-learning developer specializing in using Storyline 2 to create my courses and interactions. And I wanted to show you how I did this panning uh, project for the latest challenge, number 76 at this point, uh, for the e-learning heroes. And so you see here I've got this little eyeball, it's a slider, and I'm moving it right and left to pan up and down uh, the uh, up and down Manhattan in this case. You can use this with any image or object on the screen. So let's take a look at how I built this. Uh, initially we just was I was trying to just get a box to move across the screen. So I had a box I put in a slider. Uh, I'm going to put in some motion path animations. Here's my first one. I'm going to bring it down to uh, say 0.25 seconds. I'm going to have this one move left and I'm going to have it have a relative start position. So what is the only two thing, changes I'm going to make to that one? Okay, so now they're at 0.25. I'll move relatively quickly. Uh, and so then I need to tie them to my to my slider. So not when timeline starts, but bring in my trigger wizard. I'm going to have the move rectangle motion path when Slider moves, slider one, and I want it to move uh, to the left. So I'm going to say this is a yeah, motion motion path one. So this is the left motion path. So I say if it's um, less than zero. So if it's less than zero, it's going to move left. And then same thing with this one. Slider moves. Slider one greater than zero. Okay. So now when I preview the slide, I move it left, move it right. Oh, I see that. Move along. And if I get back on the right hand side here, I can get it back to the right. So here's the problem. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm on the left hand side, Anywhere I'm moving it left or right on the left hand side, because it's less than zero, is moving it to the left. But on the right hand side, it's moving it to the right. It's hand, like we saw in our exercise. So this is going to require us to be able to tell Storyline where, where the variable's been or where the slider has been. <clears throat> so we're going to call it, I'm going to create what's called a, uh, a chaser variable. So my next thing we'll be doing is come in here. Create, so there's my slider. I want to create a chaser. It will be a number variable. The value will be zero. And select OK. And actually, one thing I want to do is let's go back here to my slider. Yeah. So I have this set up as a negative four to begin. So this is it's an initial zero. So the fact that my um, that my chaser variable zero matches that perfectly, and the end is going to be positive four. This makes it just a little bit clearer for me. So next, what we need to do is create uh, actually the chasing action. So I'm going to create a new trigger, and it's going to be adjust variable, what variable, the chaser variable, and I'm going to assign it the variable slider one when slider moves. And there's not going to be any conditions, no matter what. And it's important that this comes after our, our motion path, our, our, these triggers, because if they happen before, then it's going to make it move, it's not going to work. So these, this, these have to occur first, then the, uh, then the chaser variable gets changed. So now all I have to do is come into each of these uh, triggers and say, rather than saying less than zero, I'm going to say as long as it's less than the chaser, it's going to move left. And same thing with this one. As long as it's greater than the chaser, it will move right. So now when I preview. So in this preview, what I've done is I've added the chaser uh, reference to the chaser uh, variable, as well as made markings on my slider, which corresponds with the slider variable. So that when I move the slider to the left, um, 
it moves to the left. So now what would happen was the chaser was zero, and when it moved to the left, it saw that the value of the slider was less than the value of the chaser, which at the time was zero, so it moved to the left. Do that again, same thing happens. Now when I move back to the right, rather than having the problem of it moving again to the left, uh, it's going to, when I move this, so the chaser value is negative two, when it goes to negative one, then the slider variable will be greater than the chaser value, which will then cause the right uh, motion path to move. So I go here, goes back, goes back to center, and vice versa. I hope that's helpful. Uh, please email me with any questions. I'm going to make this available to you, um, part of the download. If you want to try to take it apart, play with it, be my guest. Again, ask questions, make other suggestions. I love a challenge. Again, this is Charles Zafudo, freelance instructional designer and e-learning developer at your service.